Okay, my name is Mr. Hetman. I'm here at Lincoln Technical Institute in Mawa, New Jersey. And today we're going to talk about reading and interpreting wiring diagrams, how to simplify so you can understand what's going on. And what we have here, the first circuit we're going to look at is a horn circuit from Toyota's motors. And you can see here, we start out with a 15 amp fuse, and it's a horn hazard fuse, which means because it's doing two different circuits, it's a multi-purpose fuse. 99% of the time it's located underneath the dashboard of the car. Next we have a horn relay. Then we have over here on the left hand side is circuit you see down here at the bottom, we have a ground control switch. Single pole, single throw switch. It sends ground up to the relay. And of course on the right hand side we have the, the two horns, the left hand horn and the right hand horn. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to draw in green, the horn control circuit from the battery to the ground. So we'll start up here at the fuse, and we'll go down through the coil of the relay, all the way down to the horn button, and down to ground. And that is the control side of the circuit. The second question says, draw in red the horn circuit from the battery to the ground. So right next to the green wire up here by the fuse, we'll come down, we'll draw down here, and when we get down to the relay, we'll make a right, and we'll go over, and then out through the bottom of the relay over here towards the horns, and we'll go down to the first horn, the left-hand horn, all the way down to ground, and then we'll color the red over to the right-hand side and go down through the right-hand horn. And that is the horn circuit. And then next, it says draw in blue, a part of the circuit is common for both the load and the control side. So what we have here, they only share one thing, and they only share from the fuse down to the relay. That's the only thing they share. Anytime they share something is when you will notice that everything is wiped out. So the only, if something happens to both sides of the circuit, the only thing they, have, they share is that blue wire. Okay, in this next page, we have here, so we're gonna have some problems here. We got X, Y, and Z, and we have 12 volts at the very top. So the first question, how will the circuit be affected if there was an open at X? So if we have an open at X, what will happen here is when the driver input goes into the horn button, it will never send ground up to the relay, therefore it will never turn the horns on. Number two, how will the circuit be affected if there's an open at Y? So if an open at Y, what would happen is when the driver input, they hit the horn button. They'll hear the horn, but the right hand horn will not be operating. So the customer complaint may be, my horn sound a little off, they don't sound as loud as they used to be, and what happened is we're not getting any power to the right hand horn. Number three, how will the circuit be affected if there's an open at Z? Well, the answer is the, the relay will click and the horns will not operate because there's no power going down to the horn. So the driver input will work. They'll send ground up to the relay, the relay will click, and no power going to the horn. Number four. If the horn switch is open, what voltage would you find, or voltage potential, ground positive, electronically dead? Would you find it X, Y, and Z? So, what we got going on here? At X, we would have 12 volts. At Y, we would have zero volts. And at Z, we would have zero volts. The next question, and the reason why we would have 12 volts here, because the power runs from if you use all the way down because the switch is not closed and not grounded, it'll have 12 volts right there at, at X. At Y and Z, that's because the reason why there's no voltage there, because the relay is not closed, the contacts are not touching. The next question is, if the horn switch were closed, what voltage would you find at X, Y, and Z? So now at X, you would have zero volts or ground, at Y, you would have 12 volts, and at Z, you would have 12 volts because 
We have driver input, it sends ground up to the relay, and therefore it sends power, turns that switch on, sends power down, and the horns operate correctly. Okay, in this one, in this slide here, we're doing the rear window defogger in the Toyota. Now this is a simplified circuit. There's no timers involved with this or anything. This is just an on and off switch to help you understand how the functioning works of a rear window defogger. Now a rear window defogger is nothing more than a giant resistor that creates heat and of course it either takes off the mist or the snow or ice off of your rear window. So what we have here on the left hand side of this circuit, we have the control side and then on the right side, we have the load. Now the control side obviously would be the switch up there with the light next to it. And the load side is the rear window defogger. And you can tell all the way at the top here, we have a relay and it has a small current controlling a larger current. The small current being a multi-purpose fuse, which is a 10 amp gauge fuse running the dashboard gauges. And on the right hand side, it's a 40 amp and it's a fusible link. If you look at that, you can see there's a difference between the two of them. Then we have the switch with a light bulb, and then we have the relay. And the relay in this particular case would be your best friend for diagnosing this. We'll get into that in a little bit. All right, so it said the first question is, draw in green a defogger control circuit from the battery to the ground. So we're going to draw in the green a control circuit. We're going to come down to the switch, then we're going to go right. And we're going to go back up a little bit. We're going to go over this way. We're going to go through the coil of the relay. And then we're going to go back down to the left, over to the splice. And then we're going to go right down to the ground. That is your control circuit. And the reason why the light bulb is not involved, that's not the control circuit of the rear window fogger. That's only for courtesy to tell you that the rear window fogger is on. The next one is draw in red the defogger circuit with the battery from the battery to the ground. So that would be on the right hand side and we're going to start with the circuit breaker, the 40 amp circuit breaker, gets a straight line all the way down to the ground. And then the next one is draw in blue the defogger lamp circuit from the battery to the ground. So and you would go right next to the green, you draw a blue and you would come down when you get to the switch go left then and then all the way down to the uh, splice and then all the way down to the ground. Okay on this page what we're going to do we're going to get into a little bit of diagnosing and help you understand how this circuit works a little better. So question number one, with a defogger switch in the off position, the switch is off, what voltage would you expect to find it? V, W, X, Y, and Z. So if we look down here at V, we would see zero volts. If we look over here at W, we would see 12 volts. And the reason why you would see 12 volts, there's no switch from the fusible link down to the relay. So we'd have 12 volts there. At X, we would have zero volts because the switch is not turned on yet. Y, we would have zero volts at there because that's the ground side of the circuit. And at Z, we would have zero volts also. The next question, number two, with a defogger switch in the on position, the same thing, what voltage would we find at X, Y, and Z? So at V, we would have the same thing, zero volts at ground. At W, it still remains 12 volts. X it is now 12 volts, Y is still zero or ground, and Z we would have 12 volts. So, let's repeat that. At V, zero, W, 12, X, 12, Y, zero, and Z, 12. Next question, number three. How will the circuit be affected if there's an open at V? So if we have an open at V, we lost ground on the control side of that circuit. Therefore, the customer's complaint would be when they push the button in the dashboard, 
the light doesn't light up, and you don't hear the relay clicking because we've lost ground. We didn't lose power if we lost ground. How the next one, number four. How will the circuit be affected if there's an open at W? If there's an open at W, the customer will say, the light comes on the dash, I hear the relay click, but my rear one in the fogger is still fogging. Number five, how will the circuit be affected if there's an open at X? If there's an open at X, the customer's complaint will be, the dash light comes on, but I don't hear the relay click, so they lost power to the relay, but they still have ground, and they do not have 12 volts going down, so they agree with the fogger, it's inoperative. Number six, how will the circuit be affected if there's an open at Y? It's the same as X, except instead of losing power to the relay, they lost ground to the relay. However, the dash switch and light will still light up. And then, of course, if we have an open at Z, everything will work up to the open at Z, where the rear window fogger will not operate at all. And the customer's complaint will be the rear window fogger is not cleaning anything up. Remember, any time there's an open, it will not blow a fuse. Okay, and here we have, we're going to get into a little diagnostics of problems that we have with customers coming into our garage. And the first question is, the rear window defroster switch lights up, but the rear window defroster does not work, trace and blue to area or areas that could be at fault. So the main secret here is if you go back to the very beginning of this, all these slides, these presentation slides, you'll notice that the rear window defroster light is a separate circuit. So the key word right here was the switch lights up but the rear window frost doesn't work. So trace an area in blue, so we'll come down to the switch. On the bottom of the switch, you'll see a splice. So we'll go over here to the right, and then we'll go over to the coil side of the relay. And the same way on the bottom, on the ground side of the circuit, we'll see a splice here, it looks like a stop sign. And then we'll go over to the right, and then up to the bottom of the relay. So those are the only things that control the rear window fogger the switch lighting up. Now the other thing that could be a problem, possibly, is the entire side of the rear window fogger, the load side. Possible, probably not, for the entire circuit to wipe out. Number two, the rear window fogger does not work. The defroster switch does not light up. Tracing green the area or areas it could be at fault. So the key word right here is the light does not light up and nothing works at all. So they want you to trace in green. So basically what you would have here, what do they both share? They only share from the fuse down to the switch. Or they share from the main ground down here up to the splice. That's the only two things they could possibly share to make that light not work. 